I think it's safe to say it hasn't been a good start. Drone, gone. Fridge, not working. It happened. We bought a bed. <laughs> We knew we wanted a van and had a pretty solid idea of what we were after, but our budget was small. <laughs> and every van we looked at were thousands of dollars and required a lot of work. Until a couple of days ago when serendipity struck. We've been scrolling through Facebook Marketplace for a few weeks now, and about an hour ago, a van was posted. It's in Mount Barker, it's the right price, it's done a lot of Ks, but I think we're gonna go see it. So, as proud new owners of this baby, yet to be named, we're gonna show you the ins and outs. She has a few quirks. Go through exactly how much we paid for it and what the future will look like. Don't worry, we're not done with international travel just yet. last two years we traveled internationally exclusively and have loved every second of it we've got to experience different cultures amazing sights do cool hikes and the food and the food but since returning home late 2023 we've reached the age where all our friends have decided to get married so we've got six months of weddings that we don't want to miss. But we didn't want to give up travel just yet, so we had to come up with some sort of solution. We considered pretty frequent international flights, even turning this channel into more of a lifestyle vlog. I don't remember that. That was a brief, brief consideration. Is that a consideration in here? And even thought about having a break and kind of stopping altogether. Eventually, we thought of an Australian van life stint, which keeps us close to home so we won't miss any weddings, but we still get to keep traveling. The problem is, vans are really expensive and we weren't ready to commit to something so big. That's when we came across dollar a day van relocations across Australia and we were immediately hooked. We ended up doing back to back to back relocations are trying all different types of camper vans and we just fell more in love. Everything we saw that would do the job was tens of thousands of dollars, so way out of our budget. And required work after we got it. The dream was kind of slowly dying, but we kept our eyes glued on all the marketplaces and car sales and everything just in case we would find something that would be just right for us. Then we found a 2002 Mercedes Sprinter van that was just listed. It had a bed, it had a new fridge. We knew there wasn't anything like that on the market, so we jumped on it and ended up buying it that day. Now that we're proud owners of the van, we wanted to have one adventure as is before we decide on any changes we wanted to make. But for that adventure, we need supplies. Five locks means it's locked. Sometimes. New van, baby. <laughs> To try and make this a little bit more of a challenge, we've come up with some rules. The first rule is all meals have to be consumed in or around the van. So no takeaway, no restaurants. The second rule is kind of a given. We have to sleep inside the van and use that bed at the back, which I don't really fit on. And the third rule is overall, we have to spend 80% of our time or more in and around the van. So really, we're kind of sticking to the van as much as possible. The idea of having all these rules is to spend as much time in here as possible so we can really figure out what we like and what we hate about the van layout. It's about 10 more Ks and we're at our campsite for the night. Woohoo! Just have to wait for a cow crossing. Hopefully this is the right way, otherwise we're just on someone's dairy farm. <laughs> oh, but this is all lots of cows. The farmer we spoke to said we missed the turn off by a mile and said to follow him. So now we're following a quad bike back to the road we were on. It's gotta be around here. They're so nice. First hip camps got off to a winner. And I guess this is home for the night. There is so much we don't know about this van. We've spent about $600 trying to get the air conditioning fixed. It's still not fixed. So it was a very hot drive, but we plan to learn as much as possible on this trip. I think we're gonna try and set up everything we can, but before we do that, 
a quick tour. Really fast, we wanted to say thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Aerolo. Yes, this is our first real sponsorship, so I'm feeling very legit at the moment. If you've been following our travels for a while, you might have seen us in South America where we had a bit of a situation. Being separated from your partner in a foreign country where you don't speak the language was terrifying. And a lot of you gave us some advice. And we're happy to say we listened. Enter Aerolo. Aerolo is an eSIM and it's the easiest way to stay connected to anyone anywhere without having to pay insane prices or go out of your way. The Aerolo eSIM covers over 200 countries and regions and works all through the app where you can select the location you're traveling to, pick the right plan for you and get connected straight away. Better yet, if you're traveling quickly or border hopping like we do, you can activate a regional eSIM. This means one eSIM for all of Europe or the whole time you're traveling Southeast Asia. Now that we've discovered the beauty of eSIM life, I don't think we'll be going back. Download the app today and check it out for your next trip. Use the code in our description to save $3 off of your next eSIM purchase. Okay, back to the video. Welcome to our new home. Straight off the bat, as soon as you come into the van, I think there's a couple of things that we really want to change. To give some context to why this stuff looks the way it is and is the way it is. This actually used to be a passenger transport van, so kind of like an ambulance, but not an ambulance. Which is why there is a third seat in here that we definitely don't need, and it is facing this way to deal with the passenger, I assume, that would have been in the van with them. It is also why we have all this super sturdy metal built in furniture, which is amazing because it is super quiet, but there really isn't much storage on here. So unfortunately, I think this is something we're gonna have to somehow get rid of. In here, did get some free candles and a little dustpan, <laughs> so that's nice. This is another nod to its previous life. I think these would have been containers for different size gloves for all of the nurses that would have been working in here, which makes sense, but not necessary for us. A bonus for it being a passenger vehicle is that this air conditioner is arctic so any of the australian heat that we're gonna get we will be fine once we get it sorted out in here is like our fire extinguisher our battery that we don't yet understand and our gas bottle there is a solar panel on the roof i'm not too sure how big the battery is or how big the solar charge is but we do have solar which means we also have electricity running through so there's an outlet here which has the fridge running this is a brand new waco fridge which i think retails for like a thousand dollars so i'm super glad we didn't have to invest in one of those it's already here for us around that is a custom built shelving unit with a drawer that is kind of clunky and difficult to use again it doesn't offer much storage it's fine and it's functional but i think with the plans that we currently have we'll be getting rid of this in here we also have a cigarette outlet so we could plug in one of those things and have usb outlet chargers from there as well as a couple here there's also a usb and an outlet on the weird metal shelving unit which is handy but it's just not gonna stay <laughs> on this side of the van we have a lovely little table this is great and i love the idea of it i just don't understand where you would sit to utilize this so probably also won't stay. <laughs> the unfortunate thing is we really didn't want to buy a van and just gut it and have to do everything ourselves but it's looking like that is actually what we want to do. <laughs> this is more indicators of the past life, railings and things like that that would have housed medical supplies. Again it's all super sturdy and really quiet but it's just not made for someone to live in here. As you can see, <laughs> it isn't a tall van, which is one thing that we were sort of looking for if this was our dream van, but we've decided this is a starter van for us. So yes, we want to change some things to make it more comfortable, but ultimately the idea would be that we sell this on and potentially then buy another van that we can stand up in that has a proper bathroom and a toilet that would be a forever van, if that's what we want to do. It did come with a free surfboard. <laughs> I can't wait to get rid of this, but we just thought we want to do the first trip exactly as is and go from there. So we'll be sleeping with a surfboard above our heads tonight. There has been so many times where I've been really, really close to coming down and whipping out the table and taking the surfboard out. But I'm like, no, we'll do one trip, everything as is. So that's going to be the first thing that goes. Last but not least is the bed. Unfortunately, Jordan is quite tall, <laughs> so he cannot fit laying this way which means one of the major changes we're gonna to have to make is figuring out a way to sleep long ways along the bed. But I really want to try and make this mattress work because the old owners had a 
proper dopper mattress made for this so it is incredibly comfortable and I think we'll sleep so much better on this than the typical van bed which is like slotted in pieces of cushion so if we can keep this somehow I'll be happy. Underneath the bed is where all of our storage is. So there's two cupboards here and two that you can access from the back door that are essentially just huge cubes of storage. We're thinking of turning them into a drawer situation, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah. Oh. It came with really nice curtains almost everywhere. This window is missing one for some reason. We got a cute fake plant and a candle, a random towel. This bedding came with it, surfboard. <laughs> There's a couple of lights throughout as well that are meant to work just running off of the solar battery. Other than that, that's all I know. It's really nice to drive. The cab's quite good, but as we said, the air conditioning isn't working, so it gets hot. The cab is pretty ordinary, obviously dated to 2002, so you can feel that it is old, but I really like some of the buttons and some of the things in here. Obviously, telling us that the vehicle height is in fact 2.5 meters and it's right in front of my face is gonna be helpful the whole time because I will forget how tall we are. As for the buttons, because we think it was some sort of medical transport and now it's been refitted into a camper van, the wires are crossed. So there are a lot of faded buttons that we don't really know what they do. Sometimes something happens, sometimes it doesn't. So there's a lot to figure out. It runs as an auto transmission, but you do have the option to manually shift up and down gears. Our speaker system is completely defunct. We don't have really any sound. And when we do get anything, it's really crackly and gross. One cool feature that the previous owner did install are huge cup holders. We specifically bought massive cups so that we could use these to their full maximum. Other than that, the cab's pretty standard. We've got things like mozzie nets, bits and pieces that we keep finding all around the place, which we have to figure out how to work. On the clock when we bought it was about 460,000 Ks, which scared the pants off me. But we've spoken to a few mechanics and because it's a turbo diesel engine, they think it's fine and gonna last for a long, long time. So no issues there, hopefully. Still a lot to fix. <laughs> Another cool feature is there is a huge bin next to the passenger seat for plenty of snack storage. Lots of snack storage. There's one other thing we got with the van. We think that's a massive warning, but wouldn't even know where to begin to try and set it up. Still gonna try. Also, this is very cool. How nice is that? Like if we're pulled up on a beach or something? When we rented, I think our first van together in Canada, mm -hmm. they had doors like this. And the second morning we were camping, we opened them up and it was snow everywhere mm -hmm. and it was falling. It was like a winter wonderland. That was great. So I'm so happy we have doors like that. Yeah. Won't get the snow, but that's okay. Then until we take the van. <laughs> Should we see how long it takes us to figure out how to set up? Yeah. This is what we're going for. No idea what we're doing. Where are you? Okay. I think that's going to be one of the first upgrades we get. Something a bit easier. Oh my goodness, you are the sweetest. What a bonus. I think we're gonna follow the rules and very shortly make food inside the van. Still need to figure out a table though. <laughs> been a few hours because we got caught up speaking to some other guests at this campsite which was so nice they also have a youtube channel they're also doing their first trip in their van that they just bought they're also doing a trip around australia they're also named jordan and kind of emily it's her middle name but i'll count that a jordan and a alicia emily what are the odds anyway it is definitely time for dinner first meal in the van we still don't have anything to heat anything up or to do actual cooking so we just bought things for a charcuterie board <gasps> I don't think we have cups. Do we have a knife? Trouble is we don't currently have like a pop-up table that we can use outside, but I have an idea. <laughs> We knew we couldn't get rid of this surfboard without using it. I just didn't think using it would mean using it as a table. Dinner is served. Oh, it's wobbly, be careful. I wonder how we're gonna sleep. I do wonder how we're gonna sleep. <laughs> I wonder how you're gonna sleep. The uh, man who owns this campsite came out and said, you'll be fine. Just open the window and hang your legs out the back. <laughs> it's actually not a bad idea. 
it weren't for bugs, I'd probably do it. While we're eating, I said we'd save exactly how much this van costs. We bought it for $9,990. We have already put in about $700 just having a service and trying to get the air conditioning working. And it's been pretty unsuccessful. So still heaps to learn, heaps to fix and heaps to change in the coming months. I guess the next episode. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll go through what our plans are, but we need your help. You need to mm. tell us if it's a bad idea or if you have a better idea. Cause for like the first time in a long time, these videos are pretty in line with real life. Mm. So if you have any amazing suggestions, we could actually implement them as we do the build. Please. <laughs> Please, we know nothing. Also, we need a name. So mm. comment a good name for a van. <laughs> if you can see in the camera but it has turned into the most glorious pink and purple sunset we're trying to get the drone up but it's not working I guess it was inevitable drone is stuck at the very top of one of the tallest trees Good morning. first night in the van complete. Yeah. How did you sleep? I slept okay considering. I honestly think if there was another couple of inches I'd almost be fine in that yeah. orientation. But... I was cold as well. We yeah. didn't pack appropriately. Yeah we thought 30, 35 degrees during the day we'd be hot during the night but no. Mm -hmm. Last night we also unfortunately lost our drone so that was devastating. And we didn't capture any of the cool sunset. He's at the top of a very tall tree, so the odds are not in our favour. What's your plan? Unfortunately, there's no rocks around here that we can collect and throw at where the drone is. But we do have carrot sticks. The trouble is you can't even see where it is. It's about there. Right, you ready? Carrot number one. If I was a better thrower and the tree wasn't as high, yeah, it would have worked. Trouble is, last night you could see it quite clearly because the lights were flashing. Now it's obviously dead. It did rain overnight, so it's probably broken as well. So you can't see it, which is really confusing. It's got to be in there somewhere. Unfortunately, there is no way we're getting that drone back. Time for breakfast. I guess these are the joys of van life. We didn't have an exciting breakfast prepared, but it was yogurt and apparently our fridge hasn't been working, so they are warm. Yay, van life. <laughs> I think it's safe to say it hasn't been a good start. Drone, gone. Fridge, not working. Didn't sleep. Fully outstretched. Hit my head on the surfboard this morning. <sighs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. What was that? I'm sad. New plan. We've lost the drone, the fridge isn't working. We're going to hopefully start the van, drive somewhere else, let the van charge up. Still don't know how that works. Hopefully that kicks the fridge back into gear. Did I say we don't know what we're doing? All right, let's get a coffee or something. Something to calm us down. This is the first time driving after we have packed everything up and there's extra stuff in here. So I'm hoping it's not too noisy <laughs> and I'm hoping things don't fall. I'm just glad it started. From the luck that we've had today and last night and everything, I thought for sure. Hi drone. We cooked in the van, we ate close to the van, we definitely spent 80% of our time in the van and we slept in the van. We have a lot to learn and a lot of changes we want to make, but I guess successful first night? Can you count it as successful? Challenge wise, it was definitely a success. Like we hit all of those targets. Overall, <laughs> emotionally. <laughs> Not the best. I think we'll get a coffee and then we'll explain exactly what it is we plan to do for the future and kind of discuss if tonight has changed those plans. <laughs> coffee fixes everything, right? It's hot. It's pretty good though. Yeah. And it's telling us to take a breath. We had a little talk while we were waiting for our coffees to be made. We decided it's not the worst thing in the world because we do have a few buy me a coffee donations and map sales that we've been doing. So I think it's gonna be the first time we actually withdraw from that to be able to replace the drone. So a very 
annoying thing but we are super grateful for you and all of the support that we get because it means that we can find a good deal but we can actually buy a drone and replace it because having a van we want a drone to be able to show you all of these epic spots that we get to camp at it's like the one time we were super bummed to have yeah. one gone <laughs> it's like the main thing where we're like we can use the drone all the time but yeah not if we don't have it i can't wait to show you what we're thinking for the back as well yeah i know we keep saying that let's find somewhere nice yeah we got some big plans i was quietly protective of my heart to reassure that I could break to pieces and be left alone once more we just stopped the van to be able to put the camera on a different mount and we can hear a buzzing from the back. So fingers crossed that that's the fridge. Oh yeah, it's making noise. It's cold. It's colder. It wasn't closed all the way. It's cold. I step here calling at your door. Yeah, I'm yours. Anywhere you want. Yeah, I'm yours. And now we're singing. We've come to Karakalinga Beach. It is gorgeous here and it's probably the main reason why we like to do van life is finding spots like this but we remembered there's one thing we didn't show you there's two doors how nice is this cross breeze look at my hair it is really good <laughs> I'm gonna try my hardest to explain what we're picturing for the van I don't really know if it's gonna work there's a lot of Pinterest photos I'll probably overlay so you can get the gist and tell us if it's a good idea or if it's a bad idea first thing we're definitely getting rid of the third seat we don't need it we're not gonna have guests and it's taking out too much space so she's gonna go plan is to put in a bench along here from this side to this side which is going to become sort of our kitchen the fridge will be here hopefully somewhere maybe a little sink as well and then the idea is that at least some of it would be on a drawer system imagine a drawer here pull it out and on top would be our kitchen setup i think that makes the most use of this space we could also potentially put like a little cushion on the bench so we can sit there during the day it's just an extra seating option with that hopefully we're able to move the fridge over to like where the third seat is at the moment that's the ideal plan and then what we're thinking is two seats here and here and like a pull out table so this is where we could sit during the day and get some work done this area would convert and the bed would essentially go from here back which should be long enough right yeah that'll be long enough <laughs> i'm getting too excited there's so many ideas underneath the chairs we're thinking because you need to utilize so much space with van life underneath this chair would be like a portable toilet for emergencies only just in case and underneath the one that would be here would be housing all of our batteries and our fire extinguisher all of that important stuff that makes sense right under the bed we would keep storage but what we're thinking is that they become a few massive drawers that pull out that way we get to utilize every inch of under the bed I've also seen on Pinterest that you can make like drawers that pull out and it sort of becomes like two seats and then a table in the middle so if we can figure that out as well that would be <laughs> amazing <laughs> Whoa. We might change the curtains, unsure of the colour schemes yet, but the surfboard is absolutely going. I am not hitting my head on that anymore. Anyone want a surfboard? Let me know. <laughs> if you have any ideas or have seen any videos or Instagram pages, please tag us in them or send them to us on Instagram, on here, via email, anything. We need your help because we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> it's easy to see there are a lot of changes that we want to make. Ultimately, this van we're going to be using to circumnavigate Australia as much as possible. But we have flights overseas in July, so we have to make whatever changes we want to make. And then we have however many days are left until July to go around this absolutely huge country. <sighs> Yes, I don't know if we'll make it, I don't know if the van will make it. It's quite clear that I know next to nothing about vans or building them or maintaining them or mechanics or electronics, so we're bound to get into some strife. Subscribe and see if we make it. Yeah, follow along. <laughs> I guess this is why surfboards aren't tables. At least my eyes look really blue when I cry. There's a lining somewhere, you know.